three, two, one, we are live. Welcome to the Iris Lead Essentials podcast. Here we discuss the strategies in your journey to level up as an Iris developer. That is, achieve technical excellence and seriously increase your income. I'm Mike. And I'm Kayo. And the topic today is what is and how to earn the top 10% six-figure iOS dev salaries. And of course, why not, why you shouldn't settle for less. And we are live on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Today is Thursday, December 17, and it's 3 p.m. GMT. So if you're watching it live, we are taking questions. Interact with us. Exactly. Let me see if everything is working correctly. Hello, everyone in the chat. <laughs> Say hi, everyone. How are you doing? Awesome. awesome. <laughs> Say hi and where are you from? <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Awesome. Argentina, Ukraine, all over the world. Yeah. India. You can see Brazilians Israel. here. Americans. UK. Honduras. Israel. Awesome. All right. That's it. Everything's working. Interact with us, ask questions. All right, let's start. So first thing, just to clarify some misconceptions. What is a top 10%, right, a six-figure iOS dev salaries? Well, as the name says, it's a very, very high salary. That's above what 90% of people, right, or developers make in a specific location. You cannot compare locations. <laughs> right. Different currencies, different cities, different countries, things change, right? So every location, they have their own, what? Benchmarks, right? Benchmarks. Mm -hmm. So the precise amount will depend on the country and the city, but they are very high salaries for whatever location we're talking about that only 10% and above make. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So it also depends on the currency. Depending on the currency, it could be a seven figure, an eight figure, nine figure salary. Makes exactly. sense? Yep. But it's the top 10% salaries that iOS developers make in a specific location. And also, we're not referring to uh, salaries where just just income, but actually a salary, right? So working normal hours and making this figure. Make sense? Because of course mm -hmm. we can work two, three jobs and get to this level of income, right? But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a normal working hours around 40, 45 hours a week, making this kind of income. Make sense? That's it. So we can work the same amount of hours, but making much more out of it. That's the goal. That's the, the dream. <laughs> yep. All right, so let's look at some numbers here. So we gather some numbers here. The top 10% iOS dev salaries 
for these locations, right? For example, in the US, iOS developers in the top 10% are making $200,000 or more. In the UK, 100,000 pounds a year or more. Mm -hmm. In Europe, 100,000 euros or more. In Brazil, 200,000 reais per year or more. In Mexico, 100,000 per month. <laughs> yeah. Because as you can see, different currencies, different markets, different countries, right? Exactly. Things change. Also within the cities, within the country, it changes as well, right? And like, you can do the research, whatever country you're in, and look for the top 10%. How much are those mm -hmm. people making, right? And you can find those numbers. Maybe it's not that easy to find those numbers, but you can find those numbers. And don't try to convert and think that, wow, can I make $200,000 uh, living in Brazil? Yes, maybe you can, but those salaries are high also in the US because the places where you can get this salary, they have a very high cost of living. Right. right. For example, I feel, California. <laughs> I feel we should say that again, you know, because you see there 200,000 USD and then you see 100,000 euro or GPP, you know, and say, well, isn't that better? No, it's not. You know, of course it's not because you have to account for the cost of living, for taxation, for a bunch of other factors. Rent, you know? mortgage, like yeah. interest rates and... <laughs> exactly right so inflation yes and so on all right so it's important to know that maybe someone making two hundred thousand dollars in california puts less in their pocket at the end of the month than someone making 100k somewhere in the uk mm -hmm. makes sense yeah well put so it depends you need to do the math how much you spend a month what is your cost of living how much you you have left <laughs> at the end of the month yep and maybe some of you may be shocked like oh my god i never thought we could make these kind of salaries and maybe some of you are not impressed at all because maybe you already suppressed that <laughs> yeah right so they're top one percent for example in the uk making here like 200 exactly they're mobile iOS tech leads in the US making, I don't know, 400 or more, mm -hmm. depending on the position, like a very high position at Google, for example, or Apple, you can make like serious, serious six figure salaries. But the thing is, you need to, it's like a ladder, right? You need to go step by step. First, you get to the top 10%, then you go after the next ones because you need the expertise to be able to thrive in those positions. Yes. Right? There's no tips and tricks to get those positions. <laughs> you need to be the real deal. <laughs> yes, exactly. Makes sense? Yes. There's also a lot of differences here if you are a contractor or if you are a permanent employee as well. There are huge differences. For example, in the UK, uh, we have good health system here, right? So it's not, usually you don't need a private private healthcare. Mm -hmm. But in the US or in Brazil, you probably would need some private healthcare. And as a an employee, you normally get those as a benefit, right? Exactly. If you're a contractor, you can make more money, but you also need to pay your own private healthcare, for example. Uh, take care of your own retirement plan and so on so it's important to understand what you want in life what are the possibilities make a plan and get there execute <laughs> yes exactly um, this was the first of the mistakes we mentioned last time the lack of planning um, and it, 
it certainly is the the first and most crucial, in my opinion, uh, ingredient for making the ten percent, the top ten percent. You know, like for example, you might be in right now um, curve, and you, you just you, you see these numbers, and they might be too high for you. And but you know, but planning step by step, taking it step by step. Yeah, there's absolutely no reason why you can achieve that. One step at a time, there's no reason to burn out to get there. Mm -hmm. Also, the second mistake we talked about last time, there was like lack of research, right? If you don't know those numbers, you may not even be aware of them or like aiming to get there. So if you don't aim to get to those positions, it's very likely you won't get there because like you need to work towards those things. You need to learn the skills, the expertise you need to build to get there and how to find those opportunities. Exactly. For right. example, they, they're not going to get into your inbox. <laughs> you know, yeah. very rarely they will get there. And yeah. the ones that get into your inbox, they're getting to the inbox of another thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of developers. They will be fighting for that position. Right. So to get there, you need to have a plan. You need to research and build the expertise to thrive in those positions. Carlos is asking, you guys think it's only possible to make the figures in big tech companies? Want to take that? <laughs> no, you don't need to work for Google. You don't Absolutely need to work not. for Apple. Yes. Of course, if you work for those companies, right? They have the resources to pay this kind of salaries. Mm -hmm. Of course they can. But it's not the only ones. Every company nowadays is becoming tech companies, right? Imagine, for example, insurance. Insurance companies now are becoming tech companies as well. Everything's moving to digital. And those companies have a lot of resources. What they don't have is the expertise. If you build the expertise, they're going to pay whatever you want to build them what they need. Simple as that. With the expertise, you can work from anywhere in the world and you can make this amount of money. Because you may think that, oh, I live in a poor country. Really? There are no rich people in your country. There are no uh, rich companies in your country that need technical expertise. Maybe less than in other places. But there are a lot of people with resources. Maybe you just don't know about it. And there are also remote opportunities. They are less, less likely for you to find them. They are more scarce. But they exist. It's how you position yourself in the market. Right? It's... it's do people know who you are? Like, if I'm going to look for an iOS developer, how likely can I find you? Right? If I, I'm searching for a, an iOS developer, whatever you live, how easy is it for me to find you if I Google it, for example, or if I ask people in the industry? You know, if you have a reputation, if you promote it yourself, it's much more likely that those companies will find you as well. So we're going to talk about all of this as we go on. Yes. But I just wanted to clarify those top positions that you don't need to work in the big tech companies. And most companies are becoming tech companies, right? Even like banks, investment banks, they're all becoming like fintech companies. Yep. So there are opportunities, loads of opportunities. And even though like, you may think that things is slow down because of the, the COVID and all the, the crisis we're going through, yes, it, it, it had an impact, right? But do you think people need more or less software exactly. when they're working from home? You know, when everything's moving to digital, we need more, not just software, good software, good solutions. You need expertise, not hacks and putting a bunch of frameworks together and hoping for the best. No, technical excellence. That's what companies need right now and that's the opportunity we have in front of us. Make sense? That's it, yep. It's just a matter of building the expertise and positioning yourself well in the market. Because if you only build the expertise to work on small projects, hacking things around, putting a bunch of frameworks together, 
that's likely that's the kind of projects you're going to be working next time and next time and next time. Right? But if you build the skills, the expertise to work in more ambitious projects, that's more likely. That's the kind of project you're going to work next time and next time and next time. You know, as simple as that. But, as simple as that, but is it easy? <laughs> is it easy to achieve the ten, top 10% iOS dev salaries? What do you think, Mike? Well, if it was, everyone would be doing it, right? No, it's not, it's not easy at all. As I said before, with proper planning is 100% attainable, but it's not easy, <laughs> you know? No, it takes time, first of all, and it takes uh, commitment and determination and like improving every single day. You know, like we're talking about setting a very high goal here. Yeah, it's not easy. That's the plain truth. But it's fulfilling, right? The journey itself is already fulfilling. Yes. And of course, getting there, it's great as well, <laughs> right? I'm not going to complain. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, it's not easy. Otherwise, everyone will be there. Not only 10%. Make sense? 90% don't make it because it's not that easy or obvious. Yes. You know, sometimes it's not even about being easy or hard. It's about knowing the steps you get there. It's not obvious sometimes what you need to get there. It's counterintuitive sometimes decisions you need to make in your career to get there. Right? For example, I said, maybe in the beginning of your career, you thought that what you need to do is to be very good at like putting a bunch of frameworks together, hacking things around and getting things quick, like done quickly. And that's the kind of skills you need to build to get your first jobs. But those are not the kind of skills that will get you here. <laughs> yes. You know, what get you to the average job is not what's going to get you to the 10%. The same steps will just keep you there. Make sense? Yes, exactly. You get different results. You need to do different things. You need to build different skills, different expertise. We hear we hear about that a lot as well. You know, like people when people stop progressing and basically they're doing exactly the same thing. You know, and you know it stop it it stopped the progression in their career. So what's wrong? <laughs> You're doing exactly the same thing. You start. You need to start doing different things. You know, so and of course there's a cost for getting those, like for doing these new things, learning the new skills. And as you said, you need to invest time. Sometimes you need to invest money. You know. Yes. Yes. And it's not easy. And it's the unconventional. Like by definition, if you're not, like, you're you're almost marginalized. You know, at ten percent, you're not in the middle. You're not on the average. You know where there is a high concentration of developers and people that, you know, like, yeah, like this is, yeah, this is where most people are. So you're going to have to do things like vastly differently, uh, different. So, so you can get on this margin, you can get on this, um, yeah, top percent. That's, that's it. For example, one thing that is counterintuitive, like, have you ever thought about paying someone to help you tidy up your CV? There are services like this. You can pay professionals to tidy up your CV. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. They help you write a good CV, present yourself correctly, even teach you how to port yourself in interviews, how to present yourself, how to speak. And maybe you're going to pay $100, $1,000 for a consultancy for a professional like this. Yes. Well, but if you, and other people, what? I'm going to pay $1,000 for someone to help me tidy up my CV and prepare for an interview. Yeah. Because if you get a top 10%, you're going to pay $1,000 to make 200 in a year. And then in the next year, maybe you're going to make 250, 300. For as long as you exercise your expertise, you're going to get returns from that. Yes. You know, and sometimes it's counterintuitive that you need to you find these kind of services, but maybe you need a better strategy to get there. Make sense? Yeah, exactly. Do we exactly. have any questions so far? Let's see. 
Have that. Ricky asks, I wonder what percentage of these salaries you can command from a remote position as well. Well, much less than yeah. going there. But at, at the moment, a lot of jobs, they are remote. Not by choice, but by law in many places, right? Yes. But yeah, it's... I, I don't know a percentage. I cannot give you a percentage. But it's less. It's less. Of course, otherwise everyone would be working remotely or... Everyone that wants a remote job would have a remote job, but that's not the case. Yeah. So it's like, I know some companies will adjust their, off, their offer based on the cost of living that the candidate will resign. Yes. Some companies will look for countries with like cheaper expertise, right? They will outsource their software. But we said here in this podcast before, you don't want to be chosen because you are the cheapest. You want to be chosen because you are the best. You are the expert. You know, if you're just applying for jobs abroad because they are willing to pay for it because it's cheaper for them, they're going to be looking for cheap. But if you position yourself, the companies they are looking for expertise, they find you, you're going to charge for your expertise regardless where you live. Make sense? That's it. And then you're going to be like a business. You are porting yourself as a business rather than uh, going after, I don't know, a position as a salary, right? If you want to work abroad or remotely to another country, I recommend that you treat your career as a business to get these remote jobs for That's your expertise, not because you are the cheaper. Yeah. Cheapest. That's the answer <laughs> for if you compete on price, there's always someone willing to charge less. So you need to put your salary down. And then someone else is gonna come and charge less. And that's a race to the bottom. Exactly. That, Don't compete that, on price. That, that's good advice for Tulio as well. He asks any tips or advice for getting remote jobs from other countries. And yeah, like make the lives uh, of the people hiring from other countries as easy as possible. It's the advice and being become becoming a business, uh, you know, like having a company and providing your services through this company, maybe it's uh, easier than, you know, becoming a permanent employee in their payroll. And maybe even investing in advertisement for yourself, you know. Yeah. Why not? Dimitri, a student of our podcasts, <laughs> is asking, previous podcast, you were saying, listen, advice from only one squad shift, what they are talking about. Did you get top 10% top salary? Yes, <laughs> of course. But excellent point. Yes. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. I'm going to mm -hmm. tell my story as well. The point here, is it easy? No, it's not easy, but it's possible and it's fulfilling, right? The journey itself, it's fulfilling. And of course, getting there, it's fulfilling and enriching. And achieving it is a matter of choice. It's not a matter of being easy or hard. It's a choice. You're going to have to choose and commit to doing the work to get there. Make sense? It's as simple as that. I know it, it sounds <laughs> weird, but it's some really, do, it really some is. don't. Yeah, I mean, and there's nothing wrong not wanting to get here, you know? Maybe you're happy with an average career. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as you're happy, it's up to you to decide what you want. Make sense? That's it. And some people, like, they're not, like, settled. They just lack information on how to get there. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're sharing those numbers with you, because we run researches a lot. Like we have students everywhere in the world. So we need to understand the market trends so we can help them better. Make sense? I believe it's over 80 countries. <laughs> our student, like truly worldwide, you know. All right. So another thing I'd like to talk about is why? 
Why is it important to aim for those top 10% dev salaries? Like, why, why should you invest time and effort and even money mm -hmm. to get there, you know? So again, number one, fulfillment, right? Because to get to these top 10% salaries with integrity, you need to be an expert. You need to be very good at what you do. You need to be very proficient. Like, yeah. And being very proficient at what you do, it's very extremely fulfilling. Yeah. Right? You're going to be a reference, a specialist, an authority in whatever domain you work. When you achieve that, I find it extremely fulfilling. Number two, you will have the means, right? Achieving the top 10% salaries, you have a high income and the means to help others as well. You have more free time probably if you use this money correctly and you make good investments, good savings, then you're going to have some surplus that you can use to help others. You can share your expertise with others. You have more time to do it as well. And you're going to have the skills also that you can share. And sharing is extremely fulfilling as well. That's why we do what we do here. <laughs> Literally. That's it. Number three. I think you should aim for the top 10% salaries so you don't waste time and effort. Right? You work the same amount of hours as someone that is aiming to get there. But you may get much less if you don't try to get there. Make sense? Not like they're, they're working more. Same hours. <laughs> but with the expertise, <laughs> You can get much more out of it. You can deliver more value and you should get more rewards. Make sense? Mm -hmm. But time doesn't come back. So that's why it's important to aim high so you can achieve your financial freedom, whatever you're looking for, faster, you know, as soon as possible. And of course, even if you achieve your financial freedom, you don't need to stop working. Like, it's a choice because I find work working fulfilling. I like to do what I do. But when yeah. you achieve your financial freedom, you don't work because you need to. You work because you want to, which gives you more freedom to choose what kind of projects you work in. Make sense? Yeah. I mean, I know it's a cliche saying like, oh, it's not work if you love what you're doing or something like that, you know, but it is, <laughs> it's kind of, it is kind of true, you know, like you don't work, you, you just, you just allocate your time doing something that, that you really, really like, I'm going to say love there, but you really, yeah, it makes you happy <laughs> and it helps others as well. Yeah. Maybe, you know, someone that retired and got so bored, like they went back to work because like you get bored if you don't do anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you yeah. don't feel productive, you know, in society, in helping yeah. others, doing something, you know? Yes. Like learning a new craft or you're going to do something. Maybe it's not work, but you have the freedom of choice. And number four, I think it's important as well to work with other experts. You know, be around people. They're great at what they do. Yeah. Like, I find it extremely fulfilling as well. You learn so much, you know, so quickly <laughs> when you're surrounded by, um, by experts. So it's, it's, it's a good bet, you know, it's like you want that in your life. <laughs> So if you're asking Caio, what if I don't go after those salaries, what will happen? Well, there's nothing wrong again if you don't want to go there. It's a choice. But you're going to mm -hmm. work the same amount of hours 
as other people that will aim and get those positions. But you probably get much less than they are getting for their time. So choose wisely. <laughs> That's it. And how how can you find, right? Or how did we find those sellers? Research. Research online. Bunch of like sites sharing those numbers. I don't trust them very much, so I prefer to actually research and talk to developers and get to know yeah. how much they make, you know. And we've been mentoring like hundreds of developers, so we know. We know yeah. we know the figures. <laughs> yeah. And we are also developers. <laughs> we also get contracts, you know? We also get offers. So that's how we learn about those possibilities, right? And in the beginning of my career, I was very lucky to have met developers at the top, at the top of the game. They were making a lot of money. <laughs> I remember this Java developer. He would go to work at any time he wanted. <laughs> Usually late, of, uh, late at night. Right. And I, I probably worked for this company for, I don't know, maybe over a year. And I, I saw him maybe three times. And there was this like mythology <laughs> around him saying that, oh, he built the whole back end on his own. He's a genius. Like he doesn't answer to the bosses. Like the bosses answer to him. You know, there was this whole yeah. mythology. So yeah. people were saying that he was making like over 30,000 reais a month, which if we look back here, this is around 16,000 a month in Brazil. And this guy was making like 30, you know, like 10 years ago, 12 years ago. <laughs> right. And there was all this mythology around him. People even called him the, the white fly, which in Brazil is a term that means something hard to find, you know, like a white fly. Right. It's hard to find. <laughs> And I don't, I don't even know if it's true that he was making all this money, he was his genius, but he planted a seed in my head. Like, he planted a seed that like, oh, there are these top, top 1% jobs and I, and I want to get there. I want to get there, you know? I want that because I want to retire as soon as possible. I don't want to work until I'm 65 to retire. No, there's nothing wrong working until you're 65 to retire, but like, that was not my life mission you know that was not my plan right so i wanted to have a much quicker plan like a 10 years plan in retirement like a 15 years plan retirement you know so by planting these seeds by by meeting those people i could now have something very very high to aim to but understand that it's a ladder i need to go step by step i cannot just jump from making zero to making thirty thousand a month <laughs> make sense Yep. So that's how you can find, like talking to people. Another thing you can exactly. do, talk to recruiters. You know when recruiters come to you offering, I don't know, oh, I have like three jobs that looks perfect to you on LinkedIn or whatever. They send you emails. I don't know, reply yep. back get close to them you know talk to them be nice to them come on like i don't know i don't like when people are not nice to recruiters like <laughs> open uh you know like a, a communication channel start a discussion you know like there are a lot of nice people not a nice recruiters they're gonna help you so you can ask hey what is the highest salary you ever seen an ios developer make mm -hmm. they would just tell you yeah, not just that, like, but this shows like a drive, you know, it shows ambition, you know, okay, like I have perhaps like a mid-level developer here or a junior or, you know, not like the top tier, 
kind of developer and they're asking me about uh, the, the, the top salaries. Like, that's, that's not something you see every day. You know, so exactly. I think that's on the plus, um, on, on the plus column for you. It's a point for you. And when you know the possibilities, it's just like understanding then, ask them what kind of expertise they have to get these insane offers. <laughs> Right? Mm -hmm. exactly. And they make a plan. Maybe it's a 10 years plan or a five years plan. Like it took me in Brazil, it took me five years from when I started working until I got the top 10% salaries. But I wasted a lot of time. I wasted a lot of time. Like in the first four years of my career, it was a mess. You know, I was trying to reverse engineer <laughs> how to be a good developer. I didn't have any mentors, any guidance. I learned how to code even before working. I started writing software in 1998 for fun, you know? I wrote like websites, I wrote like a fan page, like a Zelda <laughs> fan page. And I, yep. and I fell in love with software. So software was part of my life throughout my, I don't know, my teens, right? But I learned on my own. It was a mess. So when I got to the job market, I just knew how to patch stuff and like copy and paste and <laughs> put a bunch of frameworks together. And I waste a lot of time, a lot of time because I was trying to reverse engineering. I didn't have information. I'm pretty sure with the right information, I would have got to the 10% much, 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 much faster, much faster. But everyone has its time. For me, it took five years. Maybe you think it was super quick. And five years, I think it's quick, but knowing what I know right now, I know that I wasted a lot of time. <laughs> Right, yep. I got there in 2012, like eight years ago, almost nine years now. I got to the top 10% offers in Brazil. So, so maybe for you, it's also a five years plan. Maybe for you, depending on where you are, it's a three years plan. You know, maybe you're already 10 years in your career, you're not there yet. No problem. Everyone has their own time. And regardless where you are right now, it's a matter of planning and getting there. It's a choice. Make sense? You don't need That's to burn it. out to get That's there. Yeah, that should do it for Dimitri's question as well. How long can it be, can it be to, to reach that 10% from junior position? I think you can get there three to five years if you focused. Focus, you get the right information and you do the work, you know? Yes. But maybe it's going to take six, ten years. No problem. Just don't burn out together. And when you get to the 10%, you shouldn't settle as well. You know, don't settle. There's, there's more. There's more. You can surpass that. There's more, you know? Then you can get to like five, so four, three, two, one percent. And so on. Right, when I go to the UK, uh, I had no idea about the market. So what did I do? I reached out to recruiters. You know, that's that's a good insight that I want to share with you. I talk to the recruiters and ask, what is the highest salary you ever seen an iOS developer make? I did some research and I noticed, or I learned that in London. The top like 1% was making 800 to 1,000 pounds a day as a contractor. And that was my goal. I am to get there until I got there. Make sense? It was not immediately. Mm -hmm. I got to the UK. I barely spoke English. <laughs> and I got like a top 1% offer. That's not how it works. But I had something to, to aim to. A very, very high aim. And step by step, I work towards getting there. Make sense? That's and it. And towards that, you need to learn like the tech system. You need to know like how to open a business. That There's a lot of things you need to learn to get there as well. When you get to the top 10%, you, start, you need to start thinking how to become a, a business. You know, how to... Uh, you need to understand the tech system. You need to understand like the health system, the retirement, like plans, you know, you need to understand yeah. Yeah. everything because like 
the more you make as well, the more you need to know how to manage those resources. Make sense? Hmm? Do we have questions? Um, By the way, don't ask only uh, one recruiter. <laughs> don't be lazy. Ask a bunch of them, you know, because then you have a good sample of what is a high salary. Maybe some recruiters don't work with top offers. They only work with more like average or like with a specific company, they have like a, a low salary. So it's important that you talk to a bunch of them and, and have a good relationship with recruiters. They are there to help you. They make money yep. if you get the job. So they want you to get the job. <laughs> They're going to help you get there. Look at that. Yeah, so... Uh, specialist versus generalist. Working on Android and iOS or maybe web dev. Or focusing on one field. It's much easier if you focus on one field very simple yes if you need a knee surgery would you go to a general surgeon that can do anything or would you go to a knee surgeon specialist specific for your problem and how much do you think both charge the specialist usually like most likely will charge much much more because you're going to get a better treatment you know better service but it's not it's not a rule there are people they are generalists and they make a lot of money <laughs> yes what do you think about oh, first graduate just going back to this question because it's important it's not because i'm saying like being a specialist is better doesn't mean you shouldn't learn other technologies i write backends in Node.js, in Ruby, I know C, I know C++, I know a bunch of languages and I write software and all of that, right? We write the backend for essential developer, we write all those things in these languages, but I don't advertise myself, I don't promote myself as a generalist. I advertise myself as an expert, as a specialist in iOS mobile development, which is a very specific niche. Make sense? So it doesn't mean you shouldn't have those skills. Like you can have those skills. They are going to support it and going to help you thrive in the companies as well. Because when you are working with the backend team, you can help them make decisions. You can have a conversation with them, understanding the whole stack, you know? But when you promote yourself, you don't go around with your CV saying like, I know Mongo, SQLite, no SQL, I know Realm, I know Android, I know iOS. If you know everything, they think you are average or below average in everything. But if you're very, very, very specialist, it's much better, much easier to get better offers. And having those other skills is going to help you thrive in that position. But they might not help you thrive in getting high offers. Make sense? That's it. What is the other question? Arifin asks, what do you think about first graduate student with some experience? 10 month internship and wanting to have good or high salary when finding a job. You can have a good salary for your level, right? You're not going to get the top 1% of like very experienced developers, but you can get the top 1% for your level, right? For example, we say this a lot. There are junior developers in the UK making less than 30k a year less than 30,000 pounds like 25 i've seen some making like 23 28 and at the same time there are junior developers with the same amount of experience like around a year or less making 50 45 50 you know it's not about the number of days or months or years you've been in the industry. 
It's about your expertise, how you position yourself, how you show up in the market, how you research, how long do you have to research, where you live, and so on. Make sense? But of course, as a beginner, you are less productive than someone with much more experience. Thus, companies will be willing to pay you less. Right? There is some chatter regarding Sorry, but your accent. Even though as a beginner, you should bio. go for the top you can get for your current expertise. Make sense? Hello, Mike? Yes. I love here. <laughs> okay. So uh, the Brazilians here say you don't sound like Brazilian. Who say that? <laughs> Tulio and Marcelo, apparently. Okay. Any other question? I am Brazilian. Eu sou brasileiro, Marcelo. Yeah. <laughs> so what is your recommendation for those people who feel stuck in their career how to get to the next level well establish a plan find a plan uh created by your by yourself on your own watch or watch like podcast this is what 28. we do the previous yeah, one exactly find good mentors and if you're lucky, you will find good seniors where you work and you can learn from them. And then you should just try to get the most out of any time you have with them. You know, just absorb everything they know. <laughs> That's the fast, fastest way to get there, to learn from experienced people. Yes. Make sense? Yes. Okay, so Rakesh asked, can you please give some tips on how to crack interviews to get these salaries? Specifically, what IRS topics makes you differentiate? We're going to cover those topics yeah, exactly. in the next questions. We're, we'll do, we'll do. <laughs> uh, Can you also explain the ladder of iOS developer? How far can one go? Architect, manager, CTO, what other skills would we need? You don't need to be a the developer part. to be a manager. Like someone asked this the last time, like, when mm. is it time to become a manager? When you want to be a manager, like you don't need, the skills that make you a good developer don't make you a good manager. If you want to be a manager, go learn management. <laughs> don't, don't waste time yeah. with development. If you want to be a manager, be a manager. Make sense? The skills that make you thrive as a developer is not the skills that make you thrive as a manager. They may help. Yeah. But you can become a CTO. You can start your own business. Like with the expertise, you can you can venture out to do your own thing as well. Right? And when is the best time? as soon as possible when you have the expertise and the means and the resources to do it. <laughs> yeah, and it's not, there's no progression for that. Like, I, I think this is maybe it's, there's a misconception, like what you, you're, you're an iOS developer and then you're an architect and then, you know. I have friends that they were like 18 years old, they started their own business and they became the CTO of their own company. 18 years old. Mm -hmm. Was that a progression? They were never a junior developer or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So th there, yeah, there is no progression no. there. And be, being a manager is like an intermediate step before becoming CTO. Or I'm not saying it can't happen, right? I'm just saying like this is not the, the norm. The problem with titles, the... and that's why we're not talking about titles here. The problem with titles is that you're letting mm -hmm. someone else give you a title or like rate you. You know, and it's very yeah. arbitrary. Every company look at like juniors, seniors, or mid-level or leads or tech leads or principal engineer differently. Like a junior at Google may be very different than a junior at 
Uber or somewhere else. Make sense? It's like yes. very, if you're letting those titles get to you, if you want to go this ladder of titles, they're almost meaningless. <laughs> yes. That's why we're talking about here, like expertise. And when you get to those salaries and you can thrive there, you know, when you are the real deal, because this is how the market is rating you. If you have the expertise to get to those places, right? Some people get here quicker or not. Like you don't need to follow any path that someone else wrote down, you know? Of course, yes. you start as a beginner and you're going to be progressing and getting the expertise. But you don't need to follow any, any specific ladder. You can create your own. We have students in the academy that never been an employee. They always been like an indie or they always had their own business. Make sense? That's it. All right. So when is the best time to go after the top 10% iOS salaries? As soon as possible. <laughs> as soon as possible, but with integrity, right? With the expertise. I don't recommend the fake it until you make it. I believe with the right strategy, you can get there making it without faking it. So you don't need to feel like an imposter. Yes. So it doesn't exactly. shake your confidence. So you don't burn out as well. Right? I believe you should aim for the top 10% and more. You should know those numbers. You should know that there are people making like half a million <laughs> as developers. But be realistic, be realistic and go one step at a time, right? To get to this top 10% salaries, maybe it's a five years plan, depending on where you are. Maybe it's a two years plan. Maybe it's a 10 years plan. Doesn't matter. It's about the journey as well. You know, we need to enjoy the journey. So the journey can be as fulfilling as getting there as well. <laughs> Make sense? It should be. I know that there are, there's a because lot of developers, they already have the expertise, they already, already have like so many years of experience. They just don't know about those offers, they just don't know about those numbers. So they don't even go, even go after them. Make sense? Yes. If you're there already, you just go after it. The best time is as soon as possible, with integrity. As soon as possible with integrity. That's it. <laughs> I need to be the real deal to get these offers and be able to maintain it in the long term. And to be able to go to the 5 to the 1%, to have your own business, to thrive, you know, in any, any setting. It's not, yeah, exactly. Because it's not a, it's not a finite thing, right? Like, okay, I achieved it, done, I'm done, you know? <laughs> Like, then you have another goal and another goal and another goal. And I think this journey that you're mentioning is, is, is something to pay attention to, uh, because, you know, like if you don't, if you're not earning this amount, you know, at the end of the month, at the end of the year or something like that, and you say, okay, I want that. I want, I want this amount, you know, in my bank account or something like that. But no, it's like the fulfillment comes from, you know, um, going through these this whole thing, this whole progress, and then the amount is just a byproduct, right? It's like a derivative of all your uh, progress. Absolutely. You can make it. Don't fake it. Mm -hmm. I work with a bunch of people that fake it. It was not fun. <laughs> yep. Not gonna cite names. All right. <laughs> So how to get there in 2021? Because that's, that's the goal here, right? As soon as possible. Like, can you get there next year? Depends. If you don't have the necessary expertise, it's very likely you won't make it. <laughs> Maybe you can fake it. I don't recommend it. But if you have the expertise, you can get there in 2021. It's just about 
making a plan, positioning yourself and going after it. We already shared the mistakes to avoid to get there in the previous podcast, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're a beginner, for example, it'll be probably impossible to convince any company to pay you those salaries. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to offer you this kind of, this level of compensation. But many of you have been around for three, five years, six years, 10 years in the industry. You probably can get there. You can get there. Right? It could be within reach. It could be within reach for many of you. Make sense? That's it. Exactly. I think we have a bunch of questions here. <clears throat> Jay asks, you mentioned making this plan, but what does this plan look like? What's the breakdown? Podcast 28. Look like? You have the whole breakdown. Literally. <laughs> What do you think? How? What do you think? How long is IRS Dev career is going to last? Be uh, like, is there a saturation point? Saturation for yeah, the iOS long. industry, exactly, or for your career? Yeah, I don't know. It's yeah, it's yeah. Every industry has a saturation point. Every industry will slow down at some point. Nothing goes up forever. <laughs> as long as iOS <laughs> is, is like you will be an expert as, uh, at yeah. writing software, right? To get here, you're not going to be just the guy that knows all the iOS frameworks and you can patch around, uh, I don't know, Alamo Fire with Realm, with React Swift, you know. No, you're not going to be the, the framework guy. You're going to use those frameworks, but you're going to be an expert, you're going to be an architect, and you can transfer all those skills to other industries. So if you feel like iOS is becoming saturated, iOS is not good enough as it used to be, like in the good old days, what do you do? You pivot, you go to another industry and you transfer all your skills. But if you only focus on the basics, if you only focus on the frameworks, the frameworks will go away and you will risk becoming irrelevant. Make sense? So build those skills that don't go away. Of course, you're going to use frameworks, but they are not the core of your application. If they are, you're doing something wrong. We have a bunch of videos about our software architecture here in the channel to help you out. Mike, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I, uh, exactly. <laughs> I, I don't, yeah. Uh, Zhao asks, I always struggle to improve my architectural knowledge since I stick to the same code bases for a long time. Yes, that's... So he's asking, is there any source you recommend to get access to more code bases? I feel that would, I feel that would help me. Looking at all the code would help you. Is that what you mean? Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. I, I don't feel that uh, there is some strong correlation to to that. I feel like if you focus Zhao on your on like the principles and you know like uh, small examples and get it from take it from there, you're gonna you're you're gonna find out you know what good architecture consists of and the thing is you learn by doing you learn by doing yeah. stuff not by looking at other people's code because exactly. just looking at code you don't understand the context the context where the architecture was chosen the team structure how many people working in that project and so on but if you're working in a project where you're part of that and you understand the whole context the whole domain and you help develop that and maintain the project that's the best way for you to keep practicing Right, to be doing stuff. Yes. Plus, I think it's very rare to find good code bases out there. You know, yeah, that there are you're... plenty on GitHub, but it's hard to judge yeah. the ones that are good or not. Good ones, yes. 
exactly. Don't rate them by the number of stars they have. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. That goes without saying, like, of course. <laughs> Do you think someone who speaks English as second language and doesn't use English daily in interview may uh, may be behind, behind, right? Yeah, behind other candidates. I don't know. When I moved to the UK, my English was terrible. It was insanely bad. It didn't stop me getting opportunities. <laughs> I don't know how. Like, <laughs> I'm still surprised <laughs> how bad my English was and I still got the job. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like your communication skills are a huge factor when you're getting a job. Right? Everything counts. If you are at the same level as someone else, they're going to start looking at other skills that you have. Communication skills is a very important skill to, to have, to master. You know? Very important. I know people that sometimes like with good communication skills get better jobs than other people with better technical skills. I know it may sound weird, but yeah, I don't think it's that weird. It actually makes sense. I because building software share... is not just about writing code, right? It's about collaboration. Usually building, especially like ambitious projects, big projects, like with a lot of people. <laughs> you need to understand the business domain. You need to understand the analysts. You need to understand the business, the market, the clients, your peers. Communication is a huge part of that. Sorry, go on, Mike. Yeah, just one comment there. It's And it's not a, an either or kind of thing, you know, like you need to have both here, you know, like you shouldn't say, oh, okay, I'm going to focus on the technical side or no, I'm going to focus on the communication side. You know, of course, like you need, you need to aim to acquire both uh, skills. Hi uh, asks, can you share your reading list? Iris blog book. Uh, we have a book suggestion um, list, and you can find it on the website slash book hyphen suggestions. Sagedeveloper.com slash book dash suggestions. Yep. Not now. Focus here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. You can find it later. Or send us an email and we send it to you. Yeah. Anything else? I think that's it for now. All right. So finally, people have been asking, what do you need to get there? Like what kind of technical expertise? Let's start with the technical expertise you need to get there. Right? As an iOS developer, for example, you need the most obvious, right? Mm -hmm. The most obvious ones is like you need to master the programming languages you use daily. Swift, Objective-C. I don't know. Some people still write some C, C++ in their code bases. Some scripting tools, you know. You need to master those things, whatever you're using every day. Also need to master the tools you use. Git. I see a lot of developers. They may be very good developers, but they don't know how to use Git. They're... Git history is a mess. They cannot use it proficiently. They waste a lot of time. A bunch of mergers to just like solve the conflicts and leave like this huge, massive like merge <laughs> commit there. Yeah. So when you need to go back in time and find a commit and solve a problem or fix a bug, you cannot do it. You're not using your tool optimally to help you. You're using it against you. No, you need to learn your tools. You know, you need to learn your tools. Also, the iOS platform. As an iOS developer, you need to be very familiar with the iOS platform. Even the obscure topics. You know, there are a bunch of books that can help you get there. So if you're using Swift, Objective-C, you need to be very proficient at both. Maybe you're just using Swift. That's fine. There are enough projects that is Swift only. You don't need to know Objective-C. But you need to understand the principles because you're still interacting with the Objective-C runtime when you are developing for iOS, even if you're using Swift only. Makes sense? You probably will be using libraries that were written in Swift, in Objective-C, 
maybe need to fiddle around and fix some things there. So you can focus in Swift only, but you may have to interact with Objective-C and you need to be proficient there as well. What else? So git, xcode, xcode build, the command line, you know, don't fight the system, understand the Unix, Unix commands, so you can use them to help you be more productive, can write scripts, and so on. Right? And we have many videos here demonstrating like all those things, like xcode, xcode build, the command line, we're using git. In every video, we are using git a lot in Swift. Second, as an iOS developer, I recommend you be a specialist with a strong knowledge of a specific domain. So I already said, you need to be a specialist, right? Or promote yourself as a specialist, as an iOS developer, or whatever development you're going to do. And also be a specialist of a specific domain, right? It's much easier to get to the top 10% offers when a specialist in a domain. Right. For example, banking, trading, e-commerce, telecom, distributed systems, publishing, cryptocurrencies, broadcasting, betting. You know, if you live in the UK, there is a bunch of betting companies. If you are a specialist iOS developer for betting companies, you have a bunch of offers here, but not in Brazil because you don't have betting companies in Brazil. It's illegal. <laughs> okay. Maybe not anymore. I don't know. It's been a long time. I don't, don't check. So correct me <laughs> if I'm wrong, please. <laughs> But you know what I mean? If you're a specialist, like you, you work in a bunch of like banking projects, it's much more likely you're going to get a good offer in another bank as well because you already have the expertise in that domain, right? You can bring a lot to the table. Make sense? You already understand all the security necessary. You understand how to make your code more safe. You understand how to model currencies, how to model transactions, you know, and so on. Like if you're going to work with investment banks, for example, which is a sub niche of banks, right? You can go investment banks. You already understand what a stock is. You understand what a stock option is. You understand what a future is and so on. When you understand the domain, they don't need to waste time teaching you the domain. You already bring the expertise. You already know how to model this whole domain in code and be productive. Right? You can even lead their team because you're already an expert not just in iOS development, but in that specific domain. Make sense? That's it. It's much, much easier to get to those offers when you are an expert in a domain. Make sense? Yep. Again, if you need a knee surgery, you're probably going to go for the specialist. <laughs> I would, at least. <laughs> yep. So, as an iOS developer, another technical expertise you need. Testing. Automated testing. You need to be very, very, very proficient at testing. And automation in general. Right? It starts with testing, but testing enables continuous integration, continuous deployment, continuous delivery. Yes. Right? But you can only get there with the foundation. And the foundation is precise, fast, and reliable tests, automated tests. You cannot have continuous integration without tests. You cannot have continuous deployment without continuous integration. And you cannot have continuous delivery without continuous deployment, and so on. Right? You need to have a solid foundation so you can build on top of it. It's mandatory to have a continuous delivery pipeline for any company that want to be competitive in the market. And we have many videos as well in the channel about it. All our code bases we share with you, they have their continuous delivery pipeline set up. Also, you need to learn about software architecture. And please, it's not MVC, MVVM, MVP. What is the architecture of your app? Oh, it's MVC. No, it's not. It's not because your app is not just a model of views and controllers, right? There's much more to it. MVC, MVV, maybe it's like the, the UI part, but any ambitious project will have some 
domain business rules and domain logic to be implemented in the application as well, right? You're not just reading stuff from a backhand and, and putting it on the screen. There, there will be some some interaction, right? Some some modeling that you need to be good at. Also, set a software architecture software architecture that can scale. So if the project becomes more successful, that you can bring more people to join the team. You can scale the team. You can scale the, the productivity, like how many features you can deliver, and so on. Right? Like real architecture, not some basic design patterns that you learn day one when you start in the industry. You need to pass that. You need to graduate and learn the principles to achieve more. Right? So you need to learn modular design. And if you are working on ambitious projects, they will have a rich domain that you need to model. Right? If you're working for a bank, if you're working for an investment bank, if you're working for broadcasting, you need to de design their domain in code. It needs to be clean, it needs to be testable. So you need to learn domain-driven design as well. Right? You need to learn clean architecture. Hexagonal or like the only architecture as well. Because it's not like I choose one or the other. No, they all have foundation principles. They all share a lot of the foundational principles and they all bring something new to the table. So you can adapt to any situation. Right? If you learn one very well, it's very easy to learn the other as well and build on top of that knowledge. But you need, it, you need a solid foundation. Make sense? That's we it. have many videos about it here in the channel as well. Yeah. Other thing you need. Data structures and algorithms. Not just for interviews, which may be important to pass some interviews, but you need to know. Now you need to be excellent at understanding the data structure and algorithms. You don't need to memorize them. It's not about memorizing them, but understanding them. Right? Because you need to be able to solve problems optimally, especially at scale. And high offers usually are ambitious, big projects that work at scale. Maybe it's like a global app, you know, and you need to know how to deal with like loads of loads of data. You need to create good solutions, optimal solutions, especially at scale, right? Which are the, the projects that probably will pay you this amount. You need to be proficient at scale. Pass the basics, you know, pass the basics. That's it. It's, not it's like the big misconceptions about data structures and algorithms is that you need to memorize them, you know. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> Maybe someone memorized all of them. I don't know. But for most folks, like me, like I cannot memorize all of them. But I understand their principles. So when I'm solving a problem, I know that, oh, there's probably an algorithm here or a data structure that will make this better. Make sense? And if I don't remember the implementation, then I can research. But if I don't even know that there is this kind of solutions, I'm not even going to look for them and I'm going to deliver what? Suboptimal solutions. Bad solutions to the problem. Right? So you don't need to memorize them. But you need to have an excellent, excellent understanding of the main data structures and algorithms. Make sense? Yeah. But, I mean, that's it. And like, Exactly. The other person is, is like, maybe you're in an interview and you don't remember uh, a specific algorithm exactly how it works. But if you start explaining to them, you know, like they're going to realize that, okay, this, this person knows what they're talking about. You know, they, they've applied it. They understand the, the, the complexity, you know, the time uh, and all that stuff. So, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm with you on this one. You don't have to uh, remember by heart everything, right? Like many times I pass interviews, they ask a question, I don't know, about an <coughs> algorithm, data structure, 
I didn't even have to implement it because just by explaining it, how it works, they knew that, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about. As you said, like, you know, you know when someone's faking it and when someone knows what they're talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. Simple as that. So we need to be proficient to solve problems optimally. Make sense? Mm -hmm. For example, like if you need to find an item in a in a sorted array, how can you search an item in a sorted array? There are many solutions, right? You can use like mm -hmm. a binary search, for example. Because you understand, oh, it's sorted array. I need to find an item. Oh, looks like that's a perfect case for a binary search, right? And you can yes. even use those concepts outside code. <laughs> yes. They're like universal concepts, how to solve problems, right? I remember learning exactly. those things in university, not even writing code, it was like pseudocode on a paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, for example, imagine you, your CI is failing. You don't know why. A hundred commits ago, it was okay. You push a hundred commits, now it's failing. Which of these hundred commits broke it? How can you find it? And how can you find it as quick as possible? And not by looking at the GitHub UI, <laughs> probably, you know. You know, like those are concepts that if you understand how to solve them, you know what kind of algorithms can solve it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, okay, there's a hundred commits. Should I go one by one? One by one by one. Oh, we can use like the concept of a binary search, right? We can split it, maybe like take 50 behind, run the test. Oh, it's passing. So it's within this 50. <laughs> split again, 25 commits forward, run the test. Oh, it's passing. So it's within this 25 less commits. You run like 12 forward, run the test. Oh, it's failing. Now you know it's between 25 and 12. So you start limiting the scope you have to yep. search for. Make sense? Yeah. So those concepts yep. apply to scripting, to anything you need to do with. By the way, you can solve it with Git bisect, <laughs> which is a built in yep. to find bad commits in Git. But you understand how it works, right? So you are more proficient yes. in using your tools. So you need to be excellent at understanding at least the algorithm. So when you need them, you know where to look for. But you don't need to memorize them unless, unless, unless you're going to an interview and this is like mandatory in their interview process. Then you can practice beforehand a bunch of algorithms so you it's fresh in your mind, you know? Yes. But I got away many times just by explaining it not having to implement it because if you know how to explain you know how to implement it just just a matter of taking the time to implement it now do you absolutely absolutely need all of that do you need to master the language the tools the platform do you need to be a specialist with a strong knowledge of a specific domain do you need to to be very good at automated testing do you need to be very good at automation in general ci cd software architecture, modular design, data structures and algorithms. Do you absolutely need all of that to get those offers? No. <laughs> there are probably people making those top 10% or more who never wrote, for example, a single line of test, you know, a single unit test. Yes. Probably. So, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, probably. Absolutely. Yeah. But those are yes. becoming outliers, you know. It's like it's it's becoming harder and harder to find opportunities when you don't have this technical expertise. Make sense? Because the companies, yes. right, the big companies, the ones with the resources, they already realized what kind of expertise they need in their teams to thrive because they know what their competitors are doing. They're getting very experienced CTOs as well, 
in place to help them thrive. So the demand is going to be there. They want to be technically excellent, excellent so they can thrive and compete in the market. So do you absolutely need yeah. those things? No. But then it's going to be harder. It's going to be more relying on luck. And luck is a factor as well that we all should have a little bit. It doesn't hurt to have a little bit of luck, but it shouldn't rely on luck. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you get it, be grateful. If you don't, move on. You know, don't, don't be expecting luck. So the big companies with lots of resources to offer you these top 10, 5, 1% offers, they will be expecting this kind of expertise. Right? So yes. I highly recommend you read the book Accelerate. Because they present vast, vast research on these top, top companies and what makes them competitive and what kind of skills they need, what kind of skills they're looking for, what kind of processes they have. And it, it's all what I told you here right now. So read the book so you can see the numbers and you can see the research. It's there. That's what makes them thrive. That's what they're looking for. So all the new companies that are transitioning to digital and becoming tech companies, they will also want that. So there is so many opportunities already and it's only going to go up. Make sense? So if you're prepared, you have the expertise, you show up in, correctly in the market, you promote yourself, you will get it. But you need to do the work. That's it. And if you want to get there as fast as possible, right? If you want to get to this top 10%, no relying on luck, do not do what the outliers do. If you want a more guaranteed way, you will build the technical expertise those companies are looking for. Simple as that. This brings us back to the previous um, question about planning. You know, like this is the structured way. You know, this is how you reduce significantly the risk um, for achieving such a result, right? Through the structured way, and what is it? For example, in this case, like yeah, like learn about automation and about automated testing, because it's what the good businesses, good teams, good products are are gonna be built um, with or on, or they're gonna use. But Kaya, do I really need to learn this? There is a DevOps in my team. Yeah, but the DevOps mm -hmm. is not going to write a test for you, right? Right. Oh, but we have QA engineers. Yeah, but they are testing the whole end-to-end -end of your like black box application. They're not writing the automated test. They will make you more productive as a developer. You shouldn't rely on your QA people's like finding a promise for you. You shouldn't give them like buggy software in the first place. They will be testing for other things, you know? Yeah. Of course, they're going to help you and maybe they're going to find something that pass by but like this should be like rare occasions they are not there to find bugs in your software make sense that's it they're there to guarantee the quality quality assurance that's why they're there not to babysit us developers <laughs> All right, so that's it. If you want to guarantee to get there, you will master the languages you use, you will master the tools you use, and you master the iOS platform. Make sense? You will mm -hmm. become a specialist in a domain, like e-commerce, I don't know, broadcasting, like banking, whatever makes your heart tick, you know? <laughs> there are many choices, maybe many big industries. Look for the big industries become a specialist in one maybe one two or three maximum like but if you can focus on one it's much faster much easier of course like if you are in a place where i don't know e-commerce is not very strong don't focus on e-commerce unless you are planning to move somewhere 
where e-commerce is like strong and you want to be prepared to move to this new country, city, whatever. Make sense? Yeah. Like or remote um, work remotely. Yeah. The problem is like if you invest in many domains to become an expert in many domains, you won't have the resources to actually be very, 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 very good specialist in a specific domain, right? You are spreading mm -hmm. your time, doing many things. It's very unlikely you're going to be very excellent in any. Average at best in all of them. You also learn automated tests, automation in general. You're going to understand continuous integration, deployment, and delivery. And software architecture, data structures, and algorithms. Make sense? That's it. All right. Now, what can accelerate this process, right? How? Let's see. How can you become better at those things? Let's see if anyone in the chat <laughs> can reply to this one. How can you become better and learn those skills on your own? Do you try to inverse engineer Practice. code bases on GitHub? Practice. You need to do it. Exactly. What else? Choosing a mentor. A mentor. And practice. That's it. Practice, mentor. Practice is the most important. But sometimes you don't know what to practice. That's why you need a mentor. <laughs> That's it. Side projects, exactly. But why side projects? Because you're practicing, right? Because you are applying, you are doing it, getting your hands dirty. Learn from mistakes. That's it. So to accelerate it, courses, mentors, practice, 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 practice. Don't yeah. stop. You need to seek, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> better i mean this is our story right like this is how we met right like for anyone in the audience who don't know that we've mentioning in previously in previous podcasts but the uh i left greece to go to the uk and uh to to find mentors as you guys say here you know find like better uh to work on better projects to work on world-class teams mm -hmm. It's not like you couldn't find so, opportunities exactly. there. Exactly. So I, I, I was about to say that, it's, and it's not that I couldn't find good opportunities in Greece, but it wasn't like the the top tier. You know, it wasn't like uh, at the time there wouldn't have like world class products. How long would it take for you to become like a specialist in Greece? It would be hard to find projects, maybe, right? And mentors. Yeah, and that was like back in the day. That was for sure. Maybe it's a bit better now, but yeah. But there are a lot of people making a lot of money in Greece at the same time. It's very right? true. Very, so very this true. is one thing that can accelerate. What? Maybe if you can move to another city and are willing to do it, it can accelerate. Mm -hmm. Right? It doesn't mean you cannot do it if you don't move abroad or if you move to a big city or to a place where there are better mentors, companies where you can learn from. No, you can but if you want to accelerate, to accelerate it, you can move to a place where things move faster, right? Simple as that. Yep. Exactly. You, you need to, you know, take some risks, some calculated risks and expect that, yeah, yeah, like maybe I'm not going to... Let me say that, like, moving to a big city does not guarantee anything. Yeah. Right? Remember, like those are top 10%, even in the big cities. 90% do not make it. Yeah. Let me say that. Like moving to a city doesn't guarantee anything unless you have a plan and you execute. Like a city, a country, don't do magic. They don't do magic. You need to do the work. They can accelerate. It's not mandatory. They can accelerate. But you need to do the work. You need to plan. You need to follow the steps.
that's it. Okay, maybe you move there temporarily, like Mike did. Then with the expertise, you go back to your market and you can thrive there. You bring the expertise back to your country. Make sense? Exactly. Just like when people travel to study in another country, right? You go there mm -hmm. because maybe they have better education, better opportunities, or maybe you're going to network with the people that are different. Then you go back to your country. There are even countries that pay people to go abroad, study, then come back and bring the knowledge back to the country. That's a common thing to happen. Why? Because you want to accelerate, you want to bring that expertise back to your country. And you can do it. If it's an option for you, you can accelerate the process. If not, no problem. Find those mentors, maybe even remotely, and learn from them and apply to your own market. And you can achieve it. Maybe it's going to take a little bit longer. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how long it's going to take. It's important that you are in the right path, you are in the journey, and you will get there eventually. And you are fulfilled in your journey, and you're going to feel fulfillment when you get there as well. Yeah. <laughs> you're like actively going after it you know it's not like okay let me put some time here no it's like this is the goal this is the focus you know of the week the month the year whatever because there's a price you pay when you move abroad as well you are away from your family most of the times unless they move mm -hmm. with you which was not my case you know mm -hmm. there were huge trade-offs i had to make so you need to think about that as well Maybe it's better to take a little bit more time but stay where you are because you're around the people you want to be around, you know? Yeah. Or well, trade-offs. Trade-offs. Time is not everything. Don't be rushing to get there as soon as possible. <laughs> Don't burn out. Get there as soon as possible with integrity, following your own pace. Your own pace. Don't try to follow someone else's steps. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Something like that. Is this the, <laughs> what they say, yeah. And again, you don't need to work for the big companies. You don't need to move to London to work for, I don't know, Apple. Or you don't need to move to California. You know, there are opportunities everywhere. Actually, there are companies moving away from these big cities because the taxation is just insane. How many companies are moving away from California right now? Because of the taxation. You know, Love. they're moving where? Texas. Here in the UK as well, companies moving. Far yeah. from London, you know? Yeah. Leeds. Again, I, I feel we mentioned that a lot, but I think we should be repeating that. Like, no, you don't need big companies, you know, like all these, I don't know, the, 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 the fun companies and all that to, to get these salaries. Why? It's because they're not the only ones with problems out there. And, and these sources. salaries, <laughs> yes, exactly. And these salaries are a function of the, you know, solutions you bring to the market, right? So if someone has a, a very big problem and you can solve that problem, you're going to be compensated handsomely you know so focus on solving problems and to do that you need to understand what problems exist in the first place and then the rest will follow because like two hundred thousand dollars for many companies not the big companies it's nothing if you can solve their problem their problem mm -hmm. costs more than two hundred thousand dollars that's why they're going to pay you that or three hundred or four hundred thousand dollars because their yes. problem costs them a million, two million, ten million a year if they don't solve it. Exactly. So you need to have the expertise yeah. to solve these kind of problems. And those are not MVC, MVVM, Alamo Fire, like fixing frameworks. <laughs> it's not. It, it really is not. Exactly. That's why you need to understand the domain. You need to understand about the, the you know, about the businesses, the markets. 
you know, you need to understand lots, lots of things, not just the technical part. Exactly. Yes. So another thing that's not technical that can help you accelerate negotiation skills, because many developers have the expertise already, but they don't know how to negotiate or they are afraid of negotiating and they get less than what they're worth. You know, mm -hmm. they cannot mm -hmm. negotiate a fair salary. So we have a podcast as well about it. Which one? 27? Yes. There you go. That is correct. Also promoting yourself. We have like two podcasts about it. <laughs> yep. You know, you know, we keep pushing you to promote, promote yourself. Right? Because it doesn't matter how good you are. If no one knows you, so promote yourself, start a blog, YouTube channel, start giving talks, you know, share valuable content and help others, right? Because if you help others achieve their goal, you will achieve anything you want, <laughs> right? As we said, companies are willing to pay you much more than you can ever imagine if you build the skills and the expertise they need because their problems cost more than what they're going to pay you. <laughs> it really is that simple, you know, it's like if you take that literally, you know, that, that's it. There is no frameworks, you know, like no, like libraries, all that stuff that people focus, MVC, MVVM, all these things, they, they become details, you know, that they just tools just means that they can help you solve your problems but the real pro pro <clears throat> excuse me the real um problem is how how can you help these guys out there you know like the the companies that's it and you don't need to only share like swift tips and things for developers you can also create a blog about the domain you're you, you want to be a specialist the domain you are a specialist or the domain you want to be a specialist Right. If you're mm -hmm. very into like cryptocurrencies, maybe you start a blog, iOS developer about cryptocurrency, you know, you may find a niche right. in there. Maybe companies, they want to build their crypto iOS apps. They're going to reach to you. Why? Because, oh, he's an iOS developer and he understands the crypto space. This is the perfect guy. Pay him whatever yeah. he wants. <laughs> we need this. Yeah. We need him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or her. Or her, yeah. So don't you don't need to create only content for developers. Maybe give a talk, not in a Swift developer talk uh, conference, but in a business conference. You know, you're going to show up to a bunch of companies that may be needing a leader in their mobile team and boom, found it right there. You make them lives much easier finding you. So whatever industry, exactly. e-commerce, banking, trading, health, wealth, investing, <laughs> whatever domain you're a specialist or want to be yeah. a specialist in, promote yourself there, right? You will attract the right people and companies. You want to work with banking, talk about banking, be around people that work in banking. It's much more likely you're going to work there and so on, right? For example, if you want to <laughs> collect butterflies, we said this in the other podcast. You can go after right. them in the wild, you know, go there in the wild with a net. <laughs> or you build a garden and they will come to you. That's the principle. Build and look after your garden so you attract the right things, right? So the things will come to you. Mm -hmm. You may even get these top 10% offers without going after them. They may come to you if you build your garden and take care of it. All right. Do we have any questions? The uh, Brazilians took over the chat. I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about then some things that can prevent you from getting there, right? And I think first one is like believing it's not possible. Is the number one thing that prevents you from getting there or not know, even knowing about those opportunities right not doing your research <laughs> talk about it in the yeah. last podcast also trying to get there too soon 
right? When they're not ready to thrive in such positions, because it can lead, as we said, burnout. It can lead to burnout. It can affect your confidence. You know, that's why I don't recommend the fake it until you make it approach. I recommend you become the real deal. Get there with integrity. Right? So, things that can prevent you getting there. Don't invest in your education. Your education is the things that can get you there very, very quickly. Or having no ambition, you know, not promoting yourself. Or learning other skills that you need, like negotiation. That we said here. Right? Mm -hmm. And also, are there negative aspects? To getting these offers? I think so. Like if if it's too stressful, that's negative, right? Yeah. If you cannot handle it, it's negative. Just getting the offer yes. is not enough. You need to get there and be fulfilled with it, you know? Feel like you're still growing and that you can achieve more. So if you're working too much to keep it, if like it's too much, it's like if we're burning out, that's not good. That's not good. All right? That's why we say as well that we only consider this top 10% here, the salaries where you get working normal hours. Not that you're working like 100 hours a week. It's not, that's not the goal. Yes. It goes to build the expertise so you can work normal hours but make much more. I don't want you to work double to make double. The pros become experts so they can deliver more value, get more rewards by not working more. So as long as you can afford the life you want to live, right? As long as you're fulfilled in life, everything is good, right? As long as you have the time and the means to do other things you enjoy in life as well, which is important, mm -hmm. then there are no downsides. When enjoying life, there are no downsides. Apart from taxes. <laughs> that's, that's one of the aspects. <laughs> yeah. You may pay a lot more taxes as an iOS developer, depending where you live, if you make those super high salaries. <laughs> so that's, that may be a negative aspect. You still putting more money in your pocket, but a higher percentage is going somewhere else. Right? It may be time for yep. you to branch out and start a business. Mm -hmm. Makes sense? There's nothing wrong with paying taxes. You should pay taxes. But if you can start a business and actually hiring people and contributing to society differently, you also get some tax breaks depending where you live. Make sense? Yep. Exactly. And what should you do after you get a top 10% salary? What should you do? Well, you have the expertise and you have more resources. So I think you should start helping others. I think that's one of the first things you should start doing. That's, that's no, what black belts do, right? Look at black belts. They master their art and what do they do? They teach. And in many martial arts, one of the factors for you to actually become a black belt is to start teaching others and have successful students. Then you gain your black belt. Because part of being good at what you do is about passing the knowledge forward, helping others and teaching others as well. And that's extremely fulfilling as well. I also think... When you get these high, high salaries, it's time for you to seriously aim to achieve your financial freedom. Start saving money, investing some money, right? So you can become more independent. So you can then choose at some point when to work because you want to, not because you need to. Because you shouldn't just get these top 10% salaries here and settle, right? You know what bothers me is when people say, oh, no, just settle. Like, you don't need to work. Um, come on, man. Like, don't need to right. invest so much in your education. Just, just chillax. <laughs> just chillax. No. I don't think, like, I think you can get there chillaxing. You know? You don't need to burn out. 
You have a plan? As I said, some people are faster than others. Don't compare yourself to others. Maybe it's going to take you 10 years. Maybe it's going to take you 5 years. Doesn't matter. Follow your pace and you can get there. Because people tell you to settle, but you're going to still work the same amount of hours. Why not get the most out of it? You know? I don't think it's easier <laughs> to not aim to these things. I think it's harder because you're still going to work the same amount of time, still put the same amount of effort, but get much less. So I don't think it's easier at all. Just take one step at a time, respect your pace, just compare yourself to yourself. Aim to improve a little bit every day, you know, and you'll get there. Don't settle, you know. Things are getting too hard, slow down a little bit. Try to find a better strategy, a better plan, regroup and carry on. Enjoy the ride, right? So when you achieve the top 10%, you go after the five, the four, three, two, one, one step at a time. One step at a time. And at some point, right, if you already make a very, very high top 1% salary, maybe you venture out, start your own business. You're going to have the resources, you're going to have the expertise, you're going to have the connections, and you can start, maybe, if you want, your own business. Or you just achieve your financial freedom and you chillax. I think you're going to be bored. <laughs> No, why not start a business and aim for a million a year? Why not? It's not easy, but like you can enjoy the ride there. Why not? One step at a time. Are we still lost in the chat? No, we're, we are. We are. We're back. They apologize. <laughs> it's fine, guys. <laughs> Come on, this chat is in English. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Jose said stopping during bad times is is uh is what happens. That uh stop your progress. Yes, that's very correct. It needs perseverance. Especially when things don't go your way. Yeah, like you need to expect that this is gonna happen and just deal with it. Uh, Marty asks, who wrote the Accelerate book that was recommended? Uh, it's Forsgren, Humble, and Kim. The authors are Forsgren, Humble, and Kim. I think they released it in 2018. I believe so, yes. What open source project do you recommend to contribute to? The one Whatever you, you use. use. <laughs> yeah. Like. Choose one that you use so you can make it better for you and for others, right? When I contributed mm -hmm. in the past to open source projects, I would choose one that I was using and solving bugs they had, looking at their issues and helping them improve the framework, right? Nowadays, I barely use any framework, so I don't contribute anymore, but that's my recommendation. Javier says, when you get to that 10%, I think you should focus on what motivates you the most, building your own product, the more expertise in some, in other, in other areas, etc. Yeah. This is noble. Absolutely. It's definitely one way to go. All right. So if you want to stay on the right path, why don't you subscribe to this channel? We are committed to helping you get there in 2021. Or for you, maybe it's going to be a five years plan. We're going to be here. We're going to be around. <laughs> and we're going to be here, committed to helping you get it there. So if you want to learn more, visit academy.essentialdeveloper.com. Thank you for watching. And we see you again next time. Bye, y'all. See ya.